Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about spatial organization. It's very important to learn this, it's taught to architecture students in first year. And why spatial organization is important is because when designing everything has to be justified and has a purpose. When you're going to design a building, you might not know where to start from. So following one of these concepts I'll show you in a minute will help you have a starting point. It helps you achieve the best results your design needs. Now I've explained why it's important. We'll see the different methods of spatial organization with examples on each one. The centralized organization linear organization, radial organization, clustered organization, and grid organization. A central organization is composed of a dominant central space with a number of secondary spaces grouped around it. This organization represents stability. The central space is usually a regular form and larger than the secondary spaces. It may be either an interior or an exterior space. And this central space always has an important function or a symbolic meaning because it has an important and powerful place. The secondary spaces might or might not be similar in form. If similar, maybe because they have the same function or equal importance. And this will result in a form that's symmetrical and geometrically regular. If the secondary spaces are not similar, this might happen to respond to environmental conditions. Or they'll, they're for different functions and each function needs a different form. The second spatial organization is linear organization. It consists of a series of spaces arranged sequentially in a row. It might be a series of spaces that are similar in size and form if they're for the same function. Or these spaces might have different sizes and forms if needed to be for the type of functions or the site contexts. But we'll need a single linear space bringing them together. If there is spaces that are more important than others, this can be shown by giving the space a bigger size or a different form to make it stand out. The linear organization is very flexible. It can be straight, for example, curvilinear or diagonally upslope. And this is to respond to the conditions of the site, such as topography or to capture sunlight and views. As you see in this example, linear organization can also be oriented vertically. Now we're going to see radial organization. It consists of a central space from which linear organizations extend in a radial manner. The difference between radial and centralized organizations is that in radial organizations, the secondary spaces are linear and there will be a gap between each linear space. Where in centralized organization, the secondary spaces are more compact and clustered. 
So the central space in radial organization is usually a regular form. It can it can either be visually dominant or can merge with radiating arms. And the radial spaces may be similar to one another or may differ depending on the function of these spaces or the site context. Both linear and radial organisations are good for providing a big amount of light and ventilation and if a lot of spaces require access to the outdoor spaces. The fourth organisation is clustered organisation. It's spaces that are grouped together by proximity or might have certain visual, visual qualities in common. These spaces may have similar size and form. It can also be different in size but unified and grouped by sharing the same form. If spaces do not share both of size and form, try to think of something else to, to unify them, as long as there's something in common. Clustered organisation groups its, its spaces depending on functional requirements of size, shape or proximity. So this type of organisation is very flexible. So last is grid organisation. This is spaces organised and regulated by a three-dimensional grid pattern. Even if the forms in the grid are dissimilar in size, form or function, they will still share a common relationship because they're all part of a grid which forces regularity and creates a pattern. A grid can be manipulated like you see in this example to respond to site conditions or to accommodate specific dimensional requirements of its spaces. So, I've explained to you all the different spatial organisations and how each one works. So, you can't just choose anyone and use it in your design. Your choice will depend on what your design needs. In terms of, does the functions need similar forms or difference? Does the building need privacy? Does it need a lot of exposure for light and ventilation? And other specific requirements your design needs. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Any questions drop it in the comment section and thank you for watching.